I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage in Southern California. This is a 71 Corniche. It has the brake fluid hydraulic system that runs off of the 363 fluid, soft metal hammer. And I usually hit this part of the valve body, not this end where the plug is. This, you don't want to damage this. There's that. So now what we have is the valve body and the sphere. That's what they call them. Now, I just had somebody contact me asking me this week if I rebuild the spheres, and I, I do. And they wanted to know how much. I says, well, I will rebuild your valve body and sphere for a certain amount of money. And he says, what about just the sphere? And I said, well, I won't do that. You can, you know, I'll tell you who you can go to to do that. Because this, to me, this is the brains. This is what controls the pressure. This just holds the pressure. And what the example I gave this gentleman was that do you go to your dental hygienist and say, I just want to do the bottom teeth this time. Top ones are fine. Think about that a little bit, okay? That's stupid. It's not good maintenance. Although your bottom teeth will collect more tartar. That's for sure. So I always do both, okay? Now there's, the brake pumps will fail some. And what, what fails is that push rod that runs off of the camshaft and goes up. It's designed to fail. There's a real skinny part of this push rod. It's designed to break at like 2,500 PSI, something in that range. So it's designed to prevent, just think about it for a second. Let's say the brains in this, don't tell it to shut off. And it just keeps building and building and building at one point, something is going to let go here, and it's usually this sphere. They have blown apart before. So that's why the early cars did not have that special push rod with the thin part. Uh, some of the, the there, my dad told me of stories of him going to training and them talking about blowing the side of an engine apart because the accumulator never shut off. So you got to make sure that. Everything is okay in here. These are not, these have seals on them and all that, and they do stick. So we'll see that once we get it apart. Let's start with that. Let's go ahead since we're talking about it. So there's a big plug on the end here, and I'm going to take that off. Hopefully, it won't be stronger than me. Another specialized little tool you're going to need for this. Let's just see. Oh, yeah. I like when they. Don't over tighten things. Boom. Okay. So what you have here is a big end cap that's threaded. Plug stuff screws down there and holds that in. What we're gonna do is we're gonna that brake foot coming out. Pull this valve out. Oh, now we're starting to get into it. I'll get this apart and lay it out so you can see how they all work. Just like it, only different. So what you have here is you have a shouldered washer down at the bottom. They have some adjusting shims. You have a spring. And then you have a, a, like another face on there. And that is what, as it's building pressure, it's pushing 
pushing actually inside of here. Let me get this apart. Let's see what it's going to look like. This. So what you have are the different passages here on this. Now there's O-rings in between to separate them, right? This is almost a machine fit, so it's pretty tight in there. Those O-rings get, and you can see that there is a spot for this. This is called a anti-return valve, which in English means a check valve. Um, so what happens is this through, I, I believe it's this passage, the high pressure coming in from the pump keeps pushing against this, okay? It pushes against this. And this pushes against this spring until it hits a certain spot, okay? So it's calibrated to go to a certain pressure and then it just, it, it stops and starts bypassing back to the, the uh, Let me correct that. I think what you're doing is you're building pressure inside of here, which is this passage, which goes to, uh, I think it, yeah, I think it's this one. It goes by that check valve, okay? It goes by this check valve. This check valve is designed for each pump stroke. It pushes it open for the pump to, to push its fluid. And then as soon as the pump is going on its return, it shuts it off. So it continually allows it to build pressure uh, and then this valve allow it pushes up to a certain spring tension, and then it decides that it's going to bypass and just return the fluid. So you can see that there is potential for problems here. Um, if this valve sticks in any way, it's not going to be pushing against that spring. I have seen mechanics put them in backwards. Happened to one of my mechanics actually. And what happened is he put this one valve in backwards and it just kept building pressure. So, what happened is rather than the sphere, you can say that rather than the sphere exploding, what happened is way back in the height control system, it broke. It popped one of these things apart, broke an ear, and started peeing fluid out the back of the so as far as other people's mistakes, um, that's the only real serious mistake I've ever seen on this. Uh, and it happened here. I have this valve body, it's, there's, there's potential for mistakes more than one place. Uh, I have seen when you replace these seals, there's a nylon seal in here and an O-ring behind it. People will just jam it in there and not check to make sure it's free and not pull it back out to sh make sure that we didn't snag it and get some debris in there. That'll cause problems. The debris will get in there and hold this valve open so that it never builds pressure. If this valve is stuck open, your pr pressure light will never go out. It'll just keep, it'll be in research mode. So other than that, I don't see I've never really seen any mistakes from other people. What happens is they just, this is a maintenance item, okay? It needs regular servicing. Uh, accumulators typically depends on the, the driving habits and the rest of the system, but they should last five years, something like that. Um, that's typically, now the, the late cars, the mineral oil cars, their valve body looks nothing like this. That's why it's real common you just replace the spheres on these. Their valve bodies are super simple. There's no rubber parts inside. The only rubber parts are on the outside to keep the fluid in, so they will leak sometimes. Uh, but I have never seen a valve body fail on a mineral oil car. These brake fluid cars, you got to remember also that the brake fluid, it absorbs moisture. And you have nothing but steel parts in here. And the moisture from the steel with air is going to cause corrosion. 